Welcome to Rowan University's inaugural commencement ceremony for Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. The procession is ready to begin. Please turn off all cell phones and please remain seated during the procession so everyone can see. Thank you. Be a 
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the inaugural commencement ceremony for Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. I'm Paul Katz, Dean of the Medical School. Please stand for the presentation of the colors by the Camden County Police Department Honor Guard and for the national anthem performed by the Rowan University Pep Band and Vocalist.
be seated. And as I call your name, please uh, stand up. Dr. Adrian Kirby, President and CEO, Cooper University Healthcare. Camden Mayor Dana Red. Rowan University Board Chair Linda Rohr. Rowan University President Dr. Ali Hushman. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Dr. Mark Neve, our keynote speaker. Honorary degree recipient, Dr. George Hill. Cooper Medical School of Rowan University Associate Dean, Patricia Vanston. Medical School Vice Dean, Dr. Annette Raboli. Senior Vice President for Health Sciences, Dr. Ken Blank. Student Government Association President, Daniel Leffler. Medical School Gonfalon Carrier, Dr. Edward Viner. Grand Marshal, Dr. Donald Farnelli, Rowan's senior most faculty member for 52 years. The Cooper Medical School of Rowan University Deans. The Medical School Advisory College Directors. The Rowan University Board of Trustees. Please stand. Rowan University Cabinet and Deans. Cooper Medical School Board. Cooper Medical School Department Chairs. Our elected officials. Thank you all. Please be seated. <laughs> Unfortunately, two of our speakers are unable to be with us today. On Saturday, Ann Connor Norcross mother of Cooper University Health Care Board Chairman George Norcross III and Congressman Donald Norcross passed away after a long battle with lung cancer. Beginning in the 1970s, the Norcross family played a critical role in the dream, vision, and creation of a four-year medical school in Camden. Without the efforts of the Norcross family, we would not be here today. Please join me in a moment of silence for Mrs. Norcross. Thank you. And last but not least, there are two very important constituencies that need to be recognized as well. I'd ask that the members of the charter class stand and turn around. I want you to recognize, if you would, the people most important in your life, your parents, partners, brothers, sisters, and loved ones who have provided support and resources to help bring us this day. Applaud them as you stand here ready to graduate. <laughs> Second, please recognize your Rowan and Cooper families, the faculty, staff, and administrators who share in your pride and success today. <laughs> please be seated. It's now my distinct pleasure to introduce the chairman of the Rowan University Board of Trustees, Ms. Linda Rohr. Good morning, everyone. As chairman of the Rowan University Board of Trustees, it is my esteemed pleasure to welcome all of our graduates and their families and friends to Cooper Medical School of Rowan University on behalf of the faculty, staff, and administrators. It's a great honor to congratulate the very first graduating class of Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. But new doctors, look around. I'm hardly the only one to do so. On this stage alone, we have officials from the state, county, and leaders in medicine and education who celebrate this momentous day, including Governor Chris Christie. Thank you, Governor Christie, and esteemed platform guests. I am proud to stand with you as we honor this historic class. Graduates, when you were enrolled in this university, you took a chance on a medical school that was brand new. You stand here a partner in the success of this program and the success of this city. 
which the President of the United States recently hailed as an example of growth and change. You are a key part of the story of this university and Camden. You are an important part of their history. All I know is both Cooper Medical School of Rowan University and Camden served you well. And now you leave to further learn and serve. Perhaps someday, thanks to your experience here, you may find your calling in a similar city or other places in need of physicians like you. Perhaps after your res residency, you will stay in or return to New Jersey to practice medicine. Regardless, today is a realization of a dream, many dreams actually, the dreams of the boards and administrators at Rowan University and Cooper University Healthcare, the dreams of the leaders and the people in the city of Camden and the state of New Jersey, the dreams of your families and friends, and most importantly, the dreams of all of you graduates who wanted to become physicians. Today, as we celebrate your completion of medical school, we recognize you have much more work ahead of you. And that work is critical to the well-being of us as individuals and as a society. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your difference you will make for all of us in the future. And once again, congratulations to the first graduating class of Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I am Ali Hushman, President of Rowan University. Let me start by thanking the parents, the loved ones, for trusting your most precious assets with us four years ago. We are now returning them all back to you healthy, highly educated, and very soon, hopefully, very prosperous. For that, we thank you. Look forward to the next classes for generations to come. Class of 2016 of Cooper Medical School of Rowan University, let me join in congratulating you on this milestone in your life. It's also a milestone for Rowan University. Rowan's partnership with Cooper University Healthcare to create this medical school changed both of our institutions. It is helping to bring about change in this city and region and in countless people's lives. To reach this day of celebration, many people invested and believed in this school and in you. Some of them are with us today. Governor Christie, who has been a strong advocate for our medical school since he entered office. We thank you, sir. Mayor Dana Red has encountered so many and has helped lead the transformation of this great city of Camden. Two individuals who are not here, three individuals, Congressman Norcross and Senate President Stephen Sweeney, who were the sponsors of the Higher Educational Research Restructuring Act that uh, provided research classification to Rowan University, and George Norcross III, Cooper University Healthcare Chairman and a champion for Camden's renewal, helped realize this and his father's dream, and that of many others. He's the most tenacious, energetic, dynamic, and visionary leader. And let me tell you, the reason that we are here, both in this medical school and the reason for all of our successes at Rowan University, has a lot to do with his effort. We thank you. And of course, critical to the start of this medical school and to the success of our first class are the medical school administrators, faculty and staff, all of whom took a major leap of faith to come here to create a new program. I must extend a special thank you to our founding dean, Dr. Paul Katz, who shepherded Cooper Medical School of Rowan University through this very successful beginning. Well done. Here, 
in such an important area of South Jersey, this school has been a part of the growth of what we call the Eds and Meds Hub. Here, Cooper is collaborating with MD Anderson on cancer treatment. Here, Rowan's commitment to the region promises such much more, including increased enrollment at Cooper Medical School of Rowan University and new health science programs created by the Rowan Rodkins Partnership, as well as, of course, a significant investment on the part of Rowan University by not only providing financial infrastructure, but also bringing our engineers, our scientists, to enhance significantly in the lives of our faculty member to do the kind of research that will provide evidence-based medicine to everybody in terms of learning, in terms of discovery, and in terms of patient care. So that would be the future for us. So what is next for you? Today, you begin the next step of your journey. You came with courage and ambition to our new school. After putting in much time and energy learning, sacrificing your personal life, and overcoming challenges, you have succeeded in an exceptional program. You live here as physicians, many of you fulfilling a lifelong dream. You live as examples to children in Camden, to students in our region, to tomorrow's medical school, stu school students, not that anything is possible, but that everything is possible. Remember, all of you have the potential, huge potential, to make a difference for this school and for the communities where you choose to practice. And I beg you, each and every one of you, try to practice in the state of New Jersey. Let me just assure you, today, the taxpayers of the New Jersey are providing stipend or, or support, financial support, to the tune of at least $80,000 per student per year. It's time for us to stay here and take care of our own. So thank you for you deciding to stay in the state of New Jersey and practicing. Everything you do from this day forward also will benefit Cooper Medical School of Rowan University and enhances its reputation. Everything you do from this day forward will impact the lives of friends, neighbors, even some of us right here, old people like myself. I need your help. Continue to honor, to honor the commitment people made to you and to Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. Act with wisdom and compassion worthy of a medical school profession. Excel in your residencies. Be leaders and healers. And remember your alma mater here in Camden. Stay in touch with us, with your professors. Stay abreast of the research and clinical advances being made here. Mentor new students. Volunteer every once in a while, come back to where it all started. And remember, you have made us all proud. I congratulate you and look forward for all of you to become very productive taxpayers for the good of everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. It's a great pleasure for me to be able to introduce the mayor of the city of Camden, Dana Redd. Under Mayor Redd's leadership and guidance, the remarkable renaissance of Camden is taking place. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Dana Redd. Thank you, Dean Katz. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the great city of Camden and the Cooper Medical School of Rowan University's inaugural commencement ceremony. It is such a satisfying feeling to be able to say that, especially knowing the vision and effort put into the development of this remarkable medical school. As a result, I would like to begin by recognizing and thanking some very special guests and elected officials who are here with us today and those that could not join us as they played an instrumental role in making sure the facility was not only built but continues to receive the support and funding necessary in order to continue this great work. Particularly, I'd like to recognize our New Jersey Governor, Chris Christie, our U.S. Congressman of the 1st Congressional District, Donald Norcross, 
Chairman of the Cooper Board of Trustees, George E. Norcross III, Chairman of the Rowan University Board of Trustees, Ms. Linda Rohr, President of Rowan University, Dr. Ali Guzman, also, and of course, congratulations to the 2016 graduating class of the Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. This is a monumental moment for all of those at the Cooper Medical School of Rowan University, not only to mention our graduating class today, but certainly our staff and city personnel who celebrates your achievements this day. Now, let me be clear, it is certainly about you, the 2016 graduating class, and I am so excited for you and proud of all that you have accomplished over the past four years. If we were to put this into perspective, in 2010, we held a groundbreaking ceremony. I was joined then by Governor Christie, Congressman Norcross, Chairman George Norcross, among many others who are in attendance today. Then in 2012, the doors of the medical school opened. Now we stand here at the Kip Cooper Norcross Academy, yet another wonderful facility, four years later, to celebrate the graduating class of 2016. Again, a round of applause for yourselves today and your remarkable achievements. In addition, all of the students here today have been offered residency positions, and that is quite an amazing accomplishment. The school has been and continues to exceed our expectations, and I am proud to say the school, staff, and student body are also making a tremendous impact throughout the city of Camden. You have helped anchor the community providing a stabilizing asset to the adjacent Lanning Square and Cooper Plaza neighborhoods. This facility, along with the Coop, Kip Cooper Norcross Academy, has helped bolster development and act as a catalyst for the city's ongoing redevelopment efforts. Simply look across the street at the new construction and throughout our neighborhoods. Economic development is at an unprecedented level and the city is transforming daily. But the impact of the Cooper Medical School of Rowan University goes well beyond bricks and mortar. You are making a real impact in our community and contributing outside of the classroom. This institution places priority on the community and the people that they serve. Beyond the books, students, many of which lived on our campus here in Camden, we're getting a great understanding of the social context of healthcare, and they were actively involved in hands-on patient care. This hands-on approach to learning encourages interaction and conversation between, parent, between patients, residents, and the students. It helped our students relate to those living in Camden and the patients that they served. So we want to thank the student body for volunteering your time to uplift the Camden community. Whether it's been tutoring or mentoring our city's youth, coaching sports, attending a cleanup or planting a tree, teaching English to Spanish-speaking adults, or serving those in need, your efforts have been greatly appreciated. Finally, I commend the administrators and faculty for encouraging community engagement, and I urge you to continue to do so. Cooper Medical School of Rowan University is quickly becoming a premier institution throughout this region. I believe that you are educating the kinds of physicians that any of us would be proud to have care for ourselves or our loved ones. In closing, I'd like to leave you with this quote from Eleanor Roosevelt. And the quote is, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. 
To the class of 2016, I believe in you, as do many others, and urge you to continue to pursue your dreams. You have truly set quite a high standard for the graduating classes which are to follow. Thank you and all the best. God bless you. Thank you very much, Mayor Red. Chairman of the Cooper Board, Mr. Norcross, was to be our next speaker. In his absence, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Adrian Kirby, President and CEO of Cooper University Healthcare, who will be presenting Mr. Norcross's remarks. Good morning. Um, before I begin Mr. Norcross's comments, I once, one, once again want to congratulate the class of 2016. It's just an honor and privilege to be part of this ceremony. So congratulations, we're looking forward to great things. Uh, thank you, Dr. Katz. Uh, our board chairman, as you mentioned, George Norcross, does extend his apologies that he could not be here. As mentioned, his beloved mother passed away on Saturday morning. He asked that I read his comments, which are as follows. Dr. Hushman, Dr. Katz, Governor Christie, distinguished guest, and Cooper Medical School of Rowan University, class of 2016. Thank you for this opportunity to share a few thoughts with you. Today is a great day, the culmination of a vision developed long ago. My mother would have been incredibly proud to be here today. Her husband, my father, was one of the early visionaries who believed South Jersey deserved to have a world-class four-year medical school. My father fought hard for this school, and he, too, would have been proud to see all of you graduate today. Our former CEO of Cooper, John Sheridan, who is also no longer with us, also deserves a great deal of credit for this day. We are grateful for John, to John for his many contributions. Former Governor John Corzine, who in 2009 signed the executive order allowing Rowan University and Cooper to partner to develop this medical school, also deserves recognition and our special thanks. On this stage behind me, there are a couple of people who deserve special recognition. Ed Viner, since 1990, has been laser focused on creating this school. For more than two decades, Dr. Viner impressed upon me the importance of this medical school for South Jersey. He was determined, he was relentless, and he was right. He is a big reason why we all sit here today. Thank you, Ed. We must also acknowledge Dr. Paul Katz for his tremendous work as our first dean. He has been tireless in building and leading Cooper Medical School of Rowan University from its first day until today. Paul, I thank you for your wise and steady leadership. It was 1975 when Governor Brendan Burns signed legislation to bring a medical school to South Jersey. Let me give you a little perspective on how long ago that was and what the culture was like. In 1975, Betamax videotapes, does anybody remember those? Oh, very good. Uh, which were used to record TV shows and movies were invented. Today, we watch movies on our smartphones. And in 1975, Bill Gates founded Microsoft. Well, today, computers are in every home, and we know how well Bill Gates has fared. Um, much has changed in 41 years since our dream about a medical school for South Jersey uh, became a reality. We succeeded. There are a few good lessons for this class of 19, 19, 2016 from, uh, for, to learn. You know, when you get as old as I do, you forget, like, the years all sort of run together. But first, the very first lesson, have a grand vision for the future and pursue it, just as those who had the vision for this medical school did. You succeeded in your dream to become a doctor. Now dream even bigger. 
Join us here at MD Anderson and help us fight cancer or seek to find cures for chronic diseases, drug addiction, and mental illness that plague so many people. The second lesson is one you already know. Meaningful goals are worthy of your hard work and perseverance. Just as you have worked hard and dedicated yourself to becoming doctors, continue to persevere to realize your remaining goals. Class of 2016, today we make history, but you are also part of the city of Camden's history. Camden is on the rise and in the middle of a great revitalization. During your four years, you have played a role in this revitalization by selflessly serving and caring for Camden's residents. Thank you. Your service and care have been appreciated. Now, class of 2016, you are ambassadors. Each of you has a responsibility to yourself, to us, to your school, and to your fellow classmates. As its first graduates, you work in the world, your work in the world will establish the reputation of Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. We are counting on you to make it a great reputation. We know you will make us proud. Thank you. Now, on this historic day, we are honored to have Governor Chris Christie with us. Since taking office in January 2010, Governor Christie has been a great friend to the people of Camden and South Jersey. To say Governor Christie is a great friend of the people of Camden and South Jersey is an understatement. Whenever we have asked him, he has been there for us. When we asked him to support, uh, for his support to put more police on the streets and bring poli pol community policing to the city of Camden, he was there for us and he was instrumental in establishing a county police force. When we announced that Cooper would partner with the number one cancer center in the nation to open MD Anderson Cancer Center at Cooper, he was with us and supported us. When we opened MD Anderson Cancer Center, he was right here in Camden with us. When we broke ground for a Renaissance school in the city, he was right in Camden with us. In July 2012, at the grand opening of Cooper Medical School of Rowan University, he was right here with us. And today, as you class of 2016, graduate as our first class, Governor Chris Christie is right here with us again. A good friend is there for you through thick and thin. Governor Christie has repeatedly been here for the people of Camden and South Jersey. I can tell you that none of these things would have been possible without the support of Governor Christie, his leadership and commitment to the city of Camden and South Jersey. Governor, we thank you for all of your support and friendship. And ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming, welcoming our good friend, Governor Christie, to the podium. Thank you, thank you. Now, after an introduction like that, I should just sit down. Can't make it better. I want to thank everyone here on the, on the dais. Most importantly, um, I want to thank the 43 highly talented medical school graduates um, who are the first class to take the Hippocratic Oath and be conferred their medical degrees at this medical school. Uh, this is an exciting graduation season in New Jersey. For Cooper Medical School to have their first graduating class and to realize a dream that is 41 years old is an exciting time for our state. President Obama will be here next weekend to commemorate the 250th anniversary of our state university, Rutgers. And for me, I'll be getting a raise soon. <laughs> our oldest son is graduating from Princeton University in three weeks, and that will serve as a raise for me and for my wife, Mary Pat. Uh, I want all of you to know how happy I am 
to be able to stand here and see what was laid out as a grand vision actually come to fruition. Too often in government, I get lots of presentations of things on whiteboards from people who tell me how exactly it's going to work, and I either it doesn't work or I have to take on faith that sometime long after I'm gone, it will actually happen. And then I can look back on it with at least some small sense of satisfaction that what was presented to me and what I supported um, actually is now benefiting uh, real people here in the state of New Jersey and around the country. But um, today is one of those moments when something that started for me in 2010, continued in 2012, is now concluding itself as an idea in 2016. The idea that Cooper Medical School and Rowan University could put together a world-class faculty, attract top-notch students, train them and educate them here in the city of Camden, and then have them go forth from today, as someone said earlier, as ambassadors for your school, for this community, and for the quality of the education that you've received here. It's probably hard for any of you to fully grasp how important you are in the renaissance of this city. But your faith and confidence to come and be educated here in the city of Camden help to spread faith and confidence to others in the private sector, to other governmental agencies, and to the citizens of this city, both residents and business citizens, that in fact, there could be a new day dawning for this city. You are the first tangible evidence of Camden's future. And I'm extraordinarily proud to be here with you today to make that acknowledgement to each and every one of you directly. You have great responsibilities ahead of you and also extraordinary opportunities. I'm confident that you'll use your judgment to make the most of those opportunities and to meet as aggressively as you possibly can each one of those responsibilities. Responsibilities to patients and their families who will look to you for answers they cannot comprehend and for comfort that only you, based upon your knowledge and experience, can provide. To those you work with every day, your colleagues, to be generous in sharing your wisdom and your opinions without regard to whether you think they'll be well received at the moment or not. You have an obligation to share the gifts that God has given each and every one of you. And this education is one of those. But more importantly, it's the heart and the soul that each of you possess in wanting to serve others as a physician that will lead you to be providing extraordinary comfort and service to many of those that you will encounter over the course of your career. Lastly, I'd say this to you um, as a parent of someone who's graduating this year too. It also may be a little bit hard for you to comprehend how extraordinarily proud your parents and loved ones are of you today and what a sense of investment they feel in what you've accomplished. I can recall the night that the son, our oldest son, who's graduating in a few weeks, was born. And he was born in a hospital very close to my parents' home. And after everything looked fine and he was off in his bassinet and then getting his first feeding with his mother, um, it was time for me to get out of there. And instead of going directly home, I stopped at my parents' house. And I walked in, I said, I can't stay for long, I just want to tell you one thing, I'm sorry. My parents said, you're sorry? It's a great day, you gave us our first grandchild, what are you sorry about? I said, I'm sorry, because remember all the times you told me that I would never really understand how you felt about a child of my own? I've only had one for seven hours and I already get it. And I'm sorry for saying you were stupid for saying something like that. I'd say the same thing to all of you today for those graduates who are not yet parents themselves, I want you to understand how extraordinary a day this is for your parents and your loved ones who are here and those who couldn't be here 
but are sharing the moment with you. Receiving a medical degree and becoming a physician in this country is a great, great achievement and brings with it a great sense of pride for all those who are associated with you. So yes, you have great opportunities and great responsibilities ahead of you tomorrow. But for today, enjoy with them all that you've achieved. Revel in the fact that you've gotten to this moment. For many of you, I'm sure you've been thinking about it for a long, long time. Don't worry about the responsibilities and the opportunities today. Be with your families and enjoy this moment with them because believe me, as a parent myself, I can tell you I am confident that they are extraordinarily proud of you, as am I. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Governor. I'm really pleased to be able to introduce another great friend of our medical school, our commencement speaker, Dr. Mark Neve. Dr. Neve has been invaluable to this school. From our earliest days through the present, he has been with us. Much of our success reflects the impact that he has had on CMSRU. It is fitting that he is the keynote speaker for our inaugural commencement. Dr. Neve has a national reputation for increasing diversity in medical education and advancing health care equity for all. His work makes a difference for those working in health care and for their patients. As Chief Diversity Officer and Leader of the Diversity Policy and Programs Department at the Association of American Medical Colleges, he has encouraged medical schools throughout this country to embrace diversity as a driver of educational excellence eliminate racial disparities in health care, and create best practices for increasing minority enrollment in health profession school. Dr. Neve served as Chief Operating Officer of the Josiah Macy Jr. Foundation, where he supervised day-to-day -day operations, and was Special Assistant to the Vice President of Health at New York University. He has also served as Associate Director of the Associated Medical Schools of New York, President of the National Association of of medical minority educators, an adjunct professor in the School of Education, Health, and Human Services at Hofstra University. Dr. Neve earned his doctoral degree from the University of Pennsylvania Graduate School of Education, a master's in business administration with a focus on healthcare management from George Washington University School of Business, an MS in higher education and student development from Long Island University, and a bachelor's in communication study from Southern Connecticut State University. Please join me in welcoming our commencement speaker, Dr. Mark Neve. What an honor. I hope that echo is gone that we just heard. It truly is uh, just incredibly just so incredible to see the first graduates of CMSRU. Congratulations to you. I'm going to say congratulations to you right now because you might not remember anything else I said. <laughs> uh, but I really was truly pleased when Dr. Katz asked me to uh, come and be the first commencement speaker. I mean, it was quite humbling. In fact, uh, it was a bit making me nervous, not because I haven't given graduation talks before, but because it's the very first one so I, of this particular school. So I looked at my wife and I said, what do you think about this? I need to deliver a message, you know, a really important message. It's the first one. And she looked at me and she said, the good news is they have no one to compare you to. You're the first. <laughs> and then she said, be brief. No one wants you rambling on like you usually do. <laughs> so that's, uh, for those of you not married, that's the kind of advice you will get when you are. So here you are on this graduation day. I particularly love this time, time of year when we can get together as administrators and, and really just bask in the glory of all of your accomplishment. We get to celebrate with your family and friends and the love and support and caring emanating from all of those who helped you get here today is palpable. Coming together right now and creating an incredible energy in this crowd, I witness walking in here just looking at the smiling faces 
love, pride of accomplishment, hope for the future, and above all else, when I watch the students walk in, relief. But before we look forward, let's take a moment to look back. It was just about four years ago when each of you took a risk on a brand new medical school that was still navigating the accreditation process. Considering that the school received 3,000 applications for 50 slots, I'm thinking most of you had a chance, an opportunity, to attend a more traditional, established medical school. But you took a chance on Cooper Rowan, took a chance on Camden, really, and made a conscious choice for innovative, hands-on, community-based medical education. Remember your white coat ceremony back in 2012? Do you remember who your commencement speaker was? I hope you do. It was my boss, Dr. Kirsch, president of the AAMC. Following the custom of that day, you each donned the white coat and recited the Hippocratic Oath as a reminder of the solemn and awesome responsibility that comes with joining the medical profession. Remember how strange the white coat felt? You might have felt like an imposter, wriggling and tugging at your jacket. You thought that it wasn't fitting properly. But Dr. Kirch said that day, the fit is not a matter of tailoring. It's a matter of experience. And each experience you've had over the past four years has helped you feel more comfortable in that white coat and with the role and responsibility of becoming a physician. Some of you may have had a transforming, dramatic experience like you've seen on television, but more likely what helped you to begin to feel like a physician were the everyday interactions, a thank you from a patient, a smile from a child, or a conversation with a classmate. Back on that September day at the white coat ceremony, you had just begun your medical education. Do you remember what, driven you, what had driven you to that point? What did you hope to achieve? What did you hope to achieve in your medical education and as a physician? Many graduating students I talk to these days, I attend a lot of these uh, every year, and by the way, it's very rare to have a governor and the mayor attend your graduation. It tells me how special you are. It tells me how special this institution is. But four years later, Many of the students I talk to right after graduation admit that those early motivations have been supplanted by a focus on passing licensing exams, choosing a specialty, and securing a residency position. And I'll share with the mayor, it's not just that they've all been selected for residency, they're going to some of the most prestigious residency programs across this country. As, they got, as all of you got caught up in these steps, you found, a lot of those students found that they lost track of their original goals. I'm venturing a guess here. Cooper Rowan and Camden didn't let you forget your goals. The innovative approach at this school encourages constant reflection on why you chose medicine. Unlike at other medical schools, you started with working patients just a few weeks after your first class. While you've been amassing your knowledge of medicine, you also have been delivering critical primary care services to a community that desperately needs them. I've actually heard Dr. Varner describe Cooper Rowan as a medical school with a soul. Think about that. That should be plastered on every billboard in this town, really across this country. The fact is that you can't choose Cooper Medical School of Rowan University without intentionally choosing Camden. That's because this school doesn't just sit in this city. It's an integral part of Camden. It was born of the unmet needs of the people of this city and the hope and opportunity that still exists here. Camden, like many cities across our great nation, has real challenges. I don't want to make light of that. But with Cooper Medical School of Rowan University, serving as an anchor for community investment, community involvement that reverberates with revitalization and recaptured glory. You are part of that.
But Cooper Rowan is doing more than moving one city forward. It is helping to address the limitations of traditional medical education and the challenges in our healthcare system. Challenges of equity, quality, and access to care. The two recent studies that I read exemplify for me why this school is a critically important addition to the American healthcare landscape. The first study looked at differences in physicians' verbal and nonverbal communication with black and white patients at the end of life. This study, published in the Journal of Pain Symptom Management, looked at why black patients are more likely than white patients to die in the intensive care unit. The research believed these differences in physician-patient communication may contribute to this phenomenon. They had 30 hospital-based physicians complete two mock encounters with actors playing critically and terminally ill black and white elders with identical treatment preferences. When they compared the results, they found the physician's verbal communication scores did not differ by the patient's race. However, their nonverbal communication scores differed significantly. With black patients, the physicians were more likely to stand farther away, make less eye contact, and cross their arms when speaking and listening. They touched the black patients less. In the scenario, these patients were dying. Their family members were grieving and the physicians missed a significant opportunity to show compath compassion, empathy, and caring through nonverbal communication. Because of the skin color of their patients, and remember, these were not trainees. These were experienced practicing physicians. The second study that caught my attention was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Researchers from the University of Virginia wanted to know why black Americans are systematically undertreated for pain compared to white Americans. Their conclusion might surprise you. They asked about 200 medical students and residents to rate the amount of pain patients might experience with two ailments, a kidney stone and a leg fracture. Then also using actors as mock patients, the researchers asked them to evaluate patients' pain levels and recommend appropriate pain treatments for both black and white patients. Finally, the medical students and residents answered questions about their knowledge of biological differences between whites and blacks. I'm going to ask you those questions, and I want you to play along. I'm going to tell the dais that all of the answers are false, so I'm giving you a cheat sheet, OK? This is, these are the survey questions. Blacks age more slowly than whites. Yell it out. The answer is false, people. Yell it out. <laughs> Black nerve endings are less sensitive than whites. False. Black blood coagulates more quickly than whites. False. Black skin is thicker than whites. False. Yeah, I wince too in reading those survey questions. Yet half of the trainees in the study answered true to at least one of those false statements. The trainees were also more likely to report lower pain ratings for black patients versus the white patient. They were also less accurate in their treatment recommendations for black patients than for white patients. There's some good news. On the flip side, those who didn't endorse these false state statements did not show the same bias, and their patients received better care. But before you congratulate yourself on escaping this scenario unscathed, Think back to Dr. Alan Wallerstein, Wasserstein's grand rounds on unconscious bias in academic medicine earlier this year. Dr. Wasserstein reminded you that no one is exempt from bias. We are all prone to making snap judgments about people based on their superficial and group characteristics, unless we make conscious efforts to avoid them. That's one of the many gifts you received here at Cooper Rowan. The school was designed to acknowledge and address biases. The focus here has been on helping you become a doctor who recognizes and checks your biases, and a doctor who does not allow bias to affect the quality of care you provide. During the years since your white coat ceremony, you have mastered a wealth of technical skills and built an impressive scientific knowledge base. But more than that, you've lived Cooper Rowan's stated mission to provide humanistic education in the art and science of medicine. 
at CMSRU, the qualities of patience, humility, and empathy are woven into the curriculum and into your daily experiences during your time here. These qualities are not afterthoughts relegated to an elective or two in the fourth year. They are equal in importance to the technical and scientific acumen you now possess. As you go towards residency and eventually practice, hold on to that whole picture. The specialized knowledge that you've acquired has a limited shelf life. The science will inevitably advance, new treatment options and approaches will emerge, but what will not change is your ability, your responsibility to lend dignity to others, to give compassion in the time of vulnerability, to act ethically, and to help others in need. Medicine needs doctors like all of you. I urge you to continue on this path, to keep it developing your medical abilities and your humanistic qualities. And as you go forward in your careers, I urge you to focus on three dimensions that distinguish excellent physicians, that is professionalism, communication, and leadership. Being a physician is much more than wearing a white coat and appending an MD to your name. The true professionals are those who have committed themselves to optimal outcomes, whether in research, education, or direct patient care. Extend your perception of professionalism to include the continued development of both your technical expertise and your humanist qualities. That second dimension that distinguishes excellent doctors is their ability to communicate, ability to communicate with their patients. The patient-provider relationship is, is an unrivaled opportunity to pass along information and inspiration that enable pa patients to become full partners in healthcare. As the first study I cited points out, communication goes beyond words. It includes actions and attitudes on how we relate to patients. I am particularly passionate about the role cultural competency plays in communication. I'm referring to the knowledge, skills, and attitudes required to be a culturally and linguistically competent healthcare provider. Cultural competence is not a once-and-done module or an in-service training. It is a lifelong pursuit, and I urge all of you to pursue it. Mindful not just of the words you use, but the context in which they are delivered. Communicate sensitively and without judgment, and treat each patient as a person. Get to know your patients. Demonstrate your concern and compassion. And above all, explore the unconscious assumptions that might affect your interactions. The last distinguishing dimension of being a good physician, leadership. This is critical no matter what arena you choose to pursue in your medicine career or outside of your medicine career. Remember the values that Cooper Rowan Experience has taught you. Share them with your colleagues as you go forward. Stay engaged in the issues as you've experienced them in the past four years. Healthcare needs concerned physicians like never before. And as Cooper Rowan graduates, you have an experience and perspective that medicine and our nation need. Years from now, as I mentioned, you probably won't remember who spoke at your graduation. You've sat through a lot of pomp today and are probably itching to get on celebrating with friends and family. But I want to leave you with a message I hope you will remember. Think back to the determination, courage, and focus that compelled you to choose a brand new medical school in an underappreciated and overlooked city. Use that same courage to make good on your ethical obligations to continue to improve health and opportunity for all. Continue to create a better and healthier society. Today, the tears of joys from your loved ones come not from the fact that you have now earned the title of doctor, but because you care enough about people and their health that you have committed your life to caring for them. Always remember that is why you chose medicine in the first place. Thank you for allowing me to spend some time with you on such a momentous day. Congratulations to each and every one of you, and congratulations to all of the families in the room. Thank you.
The awarding of honorary degree is a long-standing traditional tradition in higher school, higher education landscape, both in this country and globally, and here at Rowan is no exception. We select individuals whose accomplishments are meritorious and provide inspiration to our graduates and to the entire university community. Today, we honor such a person. Dr. George C. Hill is a founding member of the Medical School Board of Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. A native of Camden, he has had a long career as an educator, researcher, and expert in microbiology. He has been a leading voice for diversity, inclusivity, and social diversity in American medical schools at both Mehari Medical School and Vanderbilt University Medical School, where his impact on fostering the admission and success of underrepresented minorities is legendary. Dr. George Hill, Dr. Ken Blank, and Chairman Rohr, please join me at the podium. It is my pleasure, or my privilege, and pleasure to recommend to you that the honorary degree of Doctor of Science be presented to Dr. George Hill for his contributions to the advancement of the fields of education and medicine and his work to improve diversity and inclusivity in medical school. Mr. President, I am pleased to receive this recommendation by the authority <clears throat> granted to me as chairman of the Rowan University Board of Trustees. Today, we honor ourselves as we bestow, bestow upon Dr. George C. Hill the honorary degree of Doctor of Science with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Good afternoon. It really is a pleasure to take part in this celebration with the class of 2016. Uh, I really am uh, overwhelmed. I thank all of those who are on the dais, including our governor, who uh, has been supportive of this school for many, many years. I remember at the opening of the medical school that he and I had a chance to chat and I emphasized to him that there were going to be uh, individuals who would never have a chance to meet him, who just would be grateful if they had a chance to say that they appreciated his support. And I, I think that's very important. I really applaud Rowan University and Cooper Medical School at Rowan University because I know a lot of the faculty, I know members of our board, uh, I just am, am overwhelmed with the commitment that Dean Katz and his team have made to make sure that this day would come. It's not easy. It has a lot of, a lot of challenges. I want to recognize my family that is here, uh, my sweetheart Kathy, my uh, daughter Yvette, and then my twin brother Washington. Please don't be confused by him. Uh, and my sister, Mary Esther. We actually moved from Morristown to Camden and went to junior high and high school. And then uh, Washington and I went to Rutgers here in Camden. And now we've been other places. But the idea that our parents, Ruth and William, were able to bring us to Camden and then we do well. Uh, we're very, very proud of, 
of them and their commitment. I'm also proud of the mayor, Mayor Red, because this is a challenging community, but she's going to be successful. She is going to be successful. The final thing I would like to say is to the class of 2016, someone said it last night, and they said that Cooper Medical School at Rowan University lives its mission, lives its mission. And the first time I uh, sat and had lunch with uh, Annette Rebold and Jocelyn Mitchell-Williams, I remember them telling me about the mission of Cooper Medical School at Rowan University which I quote every time I have a chance to. The mission is what? Well, you all can say it. Camden is our, and Camden is our home. So thank you so very much for this honor. Appreciate it. I'd like to add my sincerest thanks and gratitude to those who have already been recognized. You have all contributed in special ways that helped make the more than 40-year dream of a medical school in Camden a reality, a promise kept. I also thank you on behalf of those who will benefit from the health care delivered by future classes of Cooper Medical School graduates, those who are a different kind of physician. And continuing with the theme of giving thanks, I would like to acknowledge the remarkable work of those who brought this school to life. To you, the staff, faculty, and deans of Cooper Medical School, I thank you for your passion, your perseverance, and your unrelenting commitment to excellence. I hope that you are rightly proud of what you have accomplished. Similar gratitude goes to the families and loved ones of this Cooper Medical School team. Your patience, support, and understanding were essential. I also want to thank the citizens of Camden. You welcomed us and allowed us to become part of this great city. You inspired our students, you energized our team, and you helped us define the mission, vision, and values of CMSRU. You reinforced our motto of Camden is our classroom, Camden is our home, in ways that cannot be adequately said. I also want to thank someone else who is not here, John Sheridan, the late President and Chief Executive Officer of the Cooper Health System. No one, no one played a larger role in the creation of this medical school than John Sheridan. For this and for his friendship, I am personally thankful and indebted. John would have loved this day. But most of my thanks are directed to the class of 2016, to you, the one, the only, the forevermore charter class of Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. Thank you for having the courage to take a chance on a new medical school, a school with no history, no alumni, and no other students. A school that had only a vision, a mission, and a dream to become truly unique. You each took a risk, an enormous risk, that was high stakes. Thank you for being our standard bearers. Thank you for helping our medical school become part of this city and not just in this city. Thank you for contributing more than 7,000 hours, that's 7,000 hours, of service to the citizens of Camden through tutoring, coaching, teaching English, and working in community gardens and soup kitchens. I know that you got as much as you gave from these experiences. And thank you for helping us evolve the four-part brand of this medical school, a brand with a focus on innovation, on novel educational models, on the creation of physician leaders, and most importantly, I believe, on a brand of graduating physicians who are committed to service and caring for those most in need of care. This brand has already gained national recognition. And thank you for living the mission, vision, and values of this medical school. Thank you for helping each other through four rigorous years of learning and working together. Thank you for helping us, the faculty and staff of CMSRU, create something very special in southern New Jersey. In closing, let me thank you, the charter class, for some things you haven't yet done. Thank you for becoming the kind of physicians we know you can be, caring, compassionate caregivers who put service before self. Thank you for paying it forward for the gifts you have earned, always remembering the privilege and responsibility of our profession. 
Thank you for continuing to be champions and advocates for social justice, for equity, for tolerance, and for inclusivity. And finally, thank you for leaving your imprint on Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. Best of luck to you. Now I'm pleased to introduce a special portion of our program to honor and celebrate one of our graduates, Abhimanyu Shandell, who will be promoted in the Army. Abhi, we thank you for your service and sacrifice and applaud your great work for our profession and for our country to provide medical services to our forces both home and abroad. I am pleased to invite Major Robert Bass to the stage at this time. Major Bassett serves with the Army Reserve as an emergency medicine physician and is a subspecialist in emergency medicine and toxicology at Kennedy University Hospital. Major Bassett. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, Major. Well, Dan Leffler, President of the Student Government Association, please come to the podium. So, there's this concept in psychiatry called folia de. It's a pretty rare phenomenon, and it's almost inconceivable when it happens. Folia de roughly translates to madness of two. And it describes how someone who is delusional can impose a specific delusion on someone else, usually a loved one or a partner. I'd like to tell you about how we're all beneficiaries of the most successful folia de in history. Though maybe that's just the delusion I have. After I'm done talking, and I swear it won't be long, uh, maybe you can tell me if that's the case. So, four years ago, a group of faculty, administration, and staff had this crazy idea, some would say a delusion, that they could turn this group of students into functional physicians <laughs> at a brand new medical school in the middle of Camden, New Jersey. To their credit, four years is a long time to accomplish something. It's 15% of my lifetime so far, though it's only 10% of Brian McCauley's. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. <laughs> four years is the amount of time I spent trying to convince my father to let me get a smartphone. Four years is the amount of time it'll take me to pay off like 2% of what I owe to my loan servicer. <laughs> Our school promised us it would take four years for a brand new building to become a home, for the LCME to credit us, and for us to outgrow our short white coats. And we all had healthy skepticism with each step. I'm going to admit something to you now I probably shouldn't, so Dr. Katz, please cover your ears. <clears throat> 
I distinctly remember a particularly long histology session in which I decided, for whatever reason, to relive a part of my childhood and play Oregon Trail on my computer. <laughs> I swear it was a one-time thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, my friends and I all died of a disease I'd rather not go into, but that's not true of the journey we've taken. We've all been pioneers, in a way, taking an untested route through uncharted waters. And in the spirit of my clandestine game of Oregon Trail, any skepticism about metaphorical water fording or cholera that may have popped up along the way was healthy, was warranted, and helped inspire us to make CMSRU a better place. That takes a special group of people with a little courage and an overambitious inclination for uncertainty. We faced obstacles that challenged us as students and as people, but through personal fortitude and phenomenal mentorship, we persevered and here we are. That level of mentorship is hard to be found by other medical students around the country. Uh, here at Cooper, I challenge you to work with someone who isn't actively trying to make your education better. For me, like most of us, it all started with Dr. McGeehan on interview day. Then it was Dr. Haddad and Dr. Fisher, then Dr. Severin and Dr. Lopez. Dr. Coker taught us that pink and purple aren't just spring colors. Dr. Hyman made medicine look easy, but it's not, so he's a liar, but I appreciate it. Dr. Reed proved to me that parathyroids are visible during surgery. Doctors Angelo and Vanston were the highlights of my fourth year, and they kept me grounded. And Dr. Gable was my spirit guide, and that's just me. Ask any one of my classmates, and you'll get a different set of mentors who have been equally dedicated to us. Call me crazy, but... These are the people who made our administration's initial delusion start to look more real. The concept of a brand new medical school giving us a premier education became believable and attainable. And through a completely untraditional third year and an even more surprisingly traditional fourth year, we, we became competent. <laughs> more importantly, that gave us the confidence to go to other institutions and convince them of what we now knew in our hearts to be true, that this crazy idea wasn't so crazy after all. And that moment, that's when the folia de took hold. The cure for this particular diagnosis is to separate the originator of the delusion from the party who adopted it, who should in turn revert back to normal. Well, we're about to test the effectiveness of that treatment. But I have a feeling that we're going to find out that what was once considered madness isn't actually so mad, which means, of course, we're never going back to normal. It means this has all been real. And we've been part of the creation of a pretty incredible institution. Uh, and now we get to go represent CMSOU in almost 30 institutions across the country. It's on us to create a folie a trois, a quatre, a cinq, a trente, a madness of three, a four, a five, and a thirty. I don't know about you, but I'm proud to have that opportunity. And now, um, after calling my deans delusional and admitting to our assorted professors I played video games during class, I hope I'm still on track to graduate. <laughs> Dr. Katz, are we good? Are we good? Okay. All right, all right just checking. Uh, then I can say, <laughs> I'm glad to be graduating today with the class of 2016. I couldn't be more fortunate to have spent the last four years with you all. Thank you. I'm Dr. Annette Raboli, Vice Dean of the Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. At this time, I ask the clinical faculty members, the MD candidates, and all practicing physicians to rise and recite the Hippocratic Oath along with me. The oath is found on page 15 of your program booklet. I swear to fulfill, to the best of my ability and judgment, this covenant. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those physicians in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures that are required, avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. I will remember that there is art to medicine as well as science, and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug. 
I will not be ashamed to say, I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I will respect the privacy of my patients, for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially must I tread with care in matters of life and death. It is, if it is given to me to save a life, all thanks, but it may also be within my power to take a life. This awesome responsibility must be faced with great humbleness and awareness of my own frailty. Above all, I must not plague God. I will remember that I do not treat a fever chart, a cancerous growth, but a sick human being whose illness may affect the person's family and economic stability. My responsibility includes these related problems if I am to care adequately for the sick. I will prevent disease whenever I can, for prevention is preferable to cure. I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings, those sound of mind and body, as well as the infirm. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy life and art, respect it while I live, and remembered with affection thereafter. May I always act so as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling, and may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. Please be seated. Well, we're almost there. One more hour of boring speeches, and then we'll let you go. I will now recognize the candidates for the doctor, doctoral degree. Will the candidates please rise? Dr. Blank, will you please certify the doctoral degree candidates? Mr. President, the candidates who have successfully met all requirements for the Doctor of Medicine degree are hereby certified by the faculty for the receipt of their degrees. Chairman Rohr, these candidates have been certified as having completed all the requirements for graduation. I present them to you as proper recipients of Doctor of Medicine degree. Doctoral degree candidates of the class of 2016 who have been certified as having completed all the requirements for graduation by the authority vested in me as chairman of the Rowan University Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the Doctor of Medicine degree with all the rights privileges, responsibilities, and obligations appertaining thereto. Congratulations. Congratulations, and you may be seated. It's now time to proceed with the presentation of the graduates. Each of our graduates will be called individually and will be awarded a hood and a diploma cover. The hood is a symbol of entry into an elite community of scholars. The green denotes the profession of medicine. Now typically, graduates are called in alphabetical order, in which case Jenny Ackby would be the first member of the charter class to cross the stage and raise her diploma. But that's not actually what we're going to do. Sorry, sorry Jenny. And one of the hallmarks of our medical schools are four advisory colleges. Each student here belongs to an advisory college led by a faculty director and named after a giant in medicine. These colleges play a critical role in the well-being, personal growth and development, and career advising for our students. Our students will receive their diplomas by advisory college and will be hooded by their college's director. But that still leaves undetermined which member of the class of 2016 will be the first to get a diploma. So we decided to do the only fair thing, and that was to have a drawing of a name out of a hat, or in our case, an envelope. This drawing was held last Monday, and ironically, and in keeping with the phrase that the last will be first, 
The name that was picked was that of someone who has probably never, ever been first in any alphabetical list, Sarah Zaidi. Now that's Zaidi with a Z. Congratulations, Sarah. Susan Talamini. <laughs> Amanda McCarthy. Rebecca Lee. <laughs> Catherine Olivia Gussman. Marcy Fornari. <laughs> Gabriella Chaviano. Abhimanyu Shandell. <laughs> Christian Barrios. Daniel Leffler. Yeah. Gita Baidrea. Gwendolyn Caffrey. <laughs> Sherry English. Fan. <laughs> Denise Garcia.
Robert Goldberg. Emol Ikpot. Keaton Kath. Aaron McIntosh. <laughs> Guru Raj Shah. Stephanie Ann Zacharias. <laughs> Ryan Belakonich. Jennifer Blesnack. <laughs> Holly Caton. Michael Coletta. <laughs> Cindy Kroll. Juan Carlos Lopez. <laughs> Catherine McMacken. Jacqueline Park. <laughs> Etty Sims. James Dean Stefano.
Martin Weaver. Jenny Akpe. <laughs> Jordan Barger. Michelle Breda. <laughs> Nicole Diaz Segara. Daniel Eisman. <laughs> Brian McCauley. Atlee Melillo. <laughs> Yash Patel. Brittany Scarpeto. <laughs> Erica Schramm. The charter class of CMSRU. Congratulations. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Patty Vanston. I'm the Associate Dean for Program and Business Development. We've acknowledged that today is a very special day, a day of firsts and of milestones. As we graduate our very first medical school class, we also welcome and induct our very first alumni. So although the class of 2016 did not have traditional predecessors in the class before them, um, they did have what we referred to as honorary alumni. 
These were the last of the Robert Wood Johnson Medical School graduates just completing their fourth year of medical school. The residents and fellows at Cooper University Hospital and many of our very own faculty. Let's take a moment to thank them for serving in that very special and important role. As we prepare to induct our first class of CMSRU alumni, we want to recognize five very special students from this class who have volunteered to serve in leadership positions for the first alumni class. I'd ask that these students stand as I call their names. Michelle Brita. Marcy Fornari. Dan Leffler, <laughs> JC Lopez, and Brian McCauley. Thank you so much for serving in this important role. Can you please be seated? Today we launch a very special and we expect successful and idealistic group of new physicians a group that we hope will stay connected to us here at CMSRU, connected to their successors, connected to Rowan, to New Jersey, and most importantly, connected and committed to our values and to our mission. Will the class of 2016 please stand? Kim Barkhammer and Amy McLear from our development team just presented you with your CMSRU class of 2016 inaugural alumni pin, which will identify you as our first alumni the pioneers who have trailblazed and set the stage for those who come after you. On behalf of all of my colleagues at Rowan and CMSRU, I am honored to officially induct you into the Cooper Medical School of Rowan University Alumni Association. Congratulations. We know you'll all make us proud. Continue to make us proud. Thank you all for attending today's ceremony, and again, congratulations to the charter class. The audience is requested to main, remain in place until the platform party, honored guests, faculty, staff, and students have recessed. Shuttles back to the parking lots are available at Broadway and Washington Street entrance near the back of the tent. Again, congratulations. Thank you for being here, and enjoy the rest of your day.
21st night of September. Love was changing the mind of pretenders while chasing the clouds away. Our hearts were ringing in the key that our souls were singing. As we danced in the night, remember how the stars stole the night away. Cloudy day. Ba do, ba do, ba do, ba. 